Welcome back. Lesson 8.2 on parse speech tagging with the NLTK library is what we're talking about in this lesson. 8.2. So uh, the objective is that students will tag words for part of speech in the text using the NLTK, which stands for Natural Language Toolkit Library. Okay, so part of speech, parts of speech, right, are whether it's a verb, or a noun or adjective or a conjunction, preposition, pronoun, or a whole other host of parts of speech, right? And so <clears throat> there um, are quite a few parts of speech daggers and NLTK Natural Language Toolkit has a pretty good one. So I'll show you how to use that. Unfortunately, the setup is a bit involved to get NLTK on your computer. Okay, but here we go. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna download the NLTK library um, <clears throat> with however way you want. If you're, if you're using PyCharm, you could do it this way. Let me show you how I would do it. So within PyCharm, go to preferences, get to the preferences window. Um, I think on Windows, it's in file settings. On Mac, I will show you on Mac. It is in, under the PyCharm menu, preferences. Starting here, right, you look for the project colon name of your project. In this case, I call it my project sandbox. And I look at the project interpreter. You can see that I don't have NLTK here. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign on Mac, it's down here. On Windows, it probably is on the right side over here. So I'm gonna click plus, and then I'm gonna search for NLTK. Yep, there it is, Natural Language Toolkit version 3.5, good. So then I say install package right there. Look, um, click on that button, install package with this NLTK option selected. And this may take a bit of time. I uh, will see. That took about 10 seconds, give or take. And now it says package NLTK installed successfully. Good. I'll just shut down this. I'll say okay here. Okay. And then that actually didn't download stuff that we'll need. We have to do a second step to actually get it. And this is where it gets a little more involved because um, I'm not sure why. I don't think NLTK has been updated with the newest version of Python. So, but there's a workaround here that we can use. So we're going to do this. In a PY file, we're going to um, run this code given here. So let me grab the code given there. This little bit of code right here in this comment. This worked for me a second ago, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. This is, some people are talking about this error. If you run this NLTK.download, open and close parentheses without doing this stuff before it, it'll throw an error and it won't work. So just grab that, just copy it. Once again, I, I linked to it from my lesson plan right there on that here, on this step right here. I clicked on this link. It brought me to this website. This is a question and answer website thing. Uh, on GitHub, it's an issue. So I just select that bit of code, just highlight it with my cursor, my mouse, control C to copy it, right? If you wanna right click and do copy, that'd be fine as well. Jump over to a PY file of whatever PY file you want and just paste that code in there like that. Don't have to change anything. And then I just run this script. I'm gonna run it with the keyboard shortcut. And it's gonna open up another window. It's gonna open up this window. If it doesn't show it, the icon looks like a, a rocket here. I'm circling with my cursor on the bottom right of my screen. <clears throat> I brought this up, <clears throat> excuse me. And this is where you can actually download things. And I'd recommend you do um, the book here. The fourth option says book under identifier book. The name is everything used in the NLTK book. I already have it installed, so it says installed. It probably won't on your computer. So. Um, you click on it, you, you select it, and then you come down to this button that says download right there. You click download, and it's going to create a folder somewhere on your hard drive. In my case, it's, it's created right here. This is the pathway or the directory where it put all that, all that um, stuff that's used in the book, the NLTK book, all the directories and files and PY files and stuff. I don't really need to know that, but just anyway, just take a note there, get uh, everything in the book. Okay, then once it's done, it says finished downloading collection book. Good. So I can say, okay, thank you. Good. 
And then at this point, we're ready to use the NLTK library. So the logic is you have to import NLTK at the top of your script. And then you need to use um, the word tokenize function to tokenize a string into words. That is put them into their own separate element of a list. And that'll do that for punctuation as well. Words and punctuation will be separated into their own element in a list. And then you pass that list into the POS underscore tag function to tag for part of speech, okay? And then the returned value is a list with two element tuples. The first element of uh, which is the token and the second element is the POS tag. Okay. So let's just, let me just give you a demo of, of this right here. So um, I think I demo it down here. Basically, I'm just going to do this right here. But let me show you how, how this works. I'm going to grab a little bit of text. I'm going to sort of grab this little bit of text here. OK, so at this point, I don't need this anymore. This this little thing we just did to download the everything in book option, we don't really need it anymore, so we can just get rid of that. And so here's my text. I love linguistics as well as computer programming. That is to say, technical approaches to studying language interest in me. Or in other words, I have an interest in language and computers. Good. So we import NLTK and then we call NLTK dot word tokenize underscore between word and tokenize. And then we pass in the string, which in this case is text. I call it text. And then that'll create a list. And then we um, pass that list into nltk.pos underscore tag, and then we'll just print it out. So let's try that. There we go. So down here in my console at the bottom part of my screen, I can see the results. So it took what I wrote up here in this text on line one of my script, right? It broke it up into words on line five of the script, and then it took those broken up words or tokenized words and put it into the POS tag function and created this down here. So we have a list. We can see, I'll just zoom way in here. We have a list, we have a square bracket right there. Each element of this list is a tuple. Each tuple has two elements, two items. They're both strings. First is the token, the word, I, right? So that was the first word I wrote, I love linguistics, so I. And then we have the POS tag, the part of speech tag is PRP in this case. The second word is love. And then the part of speech tag on love is VPB or VPB, VP. There you go. You can see it. I can't say it, but um, so there we go. It, it works. Now you may be wondering, okay, what do those mean? What does PRP or VBP mean or NNS, et cetera? There's a couple ways you can do this. You can just go to this website or just Google. You can really just Google. Um, I'll do it for you. Pen tree bank tag set. Pen, it, this uh, is was created by the University of Pennsylvania, this tag set. Tree bank um, is a collection of, of interviews or a collection of data, language data. And tag set is how you correlate the POS tag to what it means. So if you just simply Google that, one of the top options, actually this top option right there is the one I had to link in my solution file. And here are um, a list of those part of speech tags. So if I jump down to PRP right there, PRP is personal pronoun. Okay, per PRP is personal pronoun. Let me just jump back over to PyCharm and look. Yeah, PRP, that's correct. I, personal pronoun. How about VBP? VBP. Here, there it is, is verb, non third person singular present. That's correct. Um, I love, that's the first person, right? First person singular present tense verb is what that part of speech tag is giving there. Right here on line 31. Okay, so that seems to have worked. Now, I will point out immediately that part of speech taggers are not 100% accurate. This is based on machine learning, so it's trying to, to do it um, 
probabilistically as best it can, but so it, that means that it's not 100% accurate. So you'll come across errors and be like, oh, wow, that's totally wrong. Yeah, it is totally wrong. And um, you just have to deal with it and, and um, you know, but they are generally pretty accurate uh, depending on how close the language that you're using to have it tag, how close that language is compared to the language the tagger was trained on with machine learning uh, techniques. Anyway, that's, that's the first one. It's pretty straightforward, right? After you do the install with that script that we had to do the install with, right? And click on book, install everything, get everything downloaded to our hard drive. Once that's done, it's pretty simple. You just import NLTK, call NLTK word tokenize on a string. That gives you a list. You pass in that list into NLTK.POS tag. And boom, you get a list with uh, two item tuples with the token and the POS tag. Okay. If you'd like to pause the video and get that to work on your end, that'd be a good idea right now. Okay, let's take a look. So you can, I, I will point out that you can actually use this function as well. So I'll go ahead and show you this function. Within a REPL, interactive shell thing, not within your PY file, uh, you could call this function. So let me do so. Let me jump up here and go to Python console. And I think you do have to import NLTK first. NLTK, and then you can run this function for my lesson plan. I just, I copied for my lesson plan. NLTK.help.upend underscore tag set. And it does give you a description of what each of those things mean right here in uh, the console, if you want to look at. So here's that one we just saw a second ago. V, B, P, ver, present tense, non, third person singular. Um, it gives you some examples there as well. Or you can just Google it. I honestly, I'd probably just Google it. And um, so, <clears throat> there's also, you could pass in this tag set equals universal into the POS underscore tag function. Let me show you what that does. So I'll just come back to my example. And right here in this function on line six, I'm passing that argument and run the whole script again. Tag set equals universal. This is kind of a more um, higher level, like kind of a less detailed part of speech. So this says prone for pronoun. This says verb, noun, adjective, ad, or excuse me, adverb, adverb, um, ADP. I'm not sure what AD, ADP means off the top of my head. Now, anyway, so the universal tag set is a little bit more general, like a little um, less detailed than uh, the POS tags that are given by default. Okay, good. You can see examples of, uh, of this in chapter five of the NLTK book that's online. So th this, I basically, they're just doing what I just did for you guys right now. Okay, let's keep moving. Yeah, we'll point out that some there's some errors in the LTK book, so you may get some errors. All right, um, so try this. Find a paragraph or two online and, and copy and paste it into an input file or an input text uh, as the input text in your program. You can just do so right in the, the PY file. Just put it in as a variable. Rerun your program and skim the tags and look for any incorrect tax. Okay, so give that a try. Just grab a paragraph or two and then give it a try for a few minutes here. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Um, find a paragraph or two. I got this off the line somewhere. I can't remember exactly where I got it at this point. But I will just show you. So I just grabbed this thing right here. Welcome. If you're completely new to programming, are you completely new to programming? If not, then we presume that you'll be looking for information about why and how to get started with Python. I got this from some Python website. I can't remember what it was at this point. Let me just go ahead and run it and look at the code. Just kind of skim through and see if you see any errors. Uh, JJ, that is an adjective, if I'm not mistaken. If I jump over to the 
tag set. I'll look at this one, JJ Adjective. Welcome. I guess welcome is an adjective, like I'm describing you as being welcome to this thing. Okay, this is interesting here with, um, I'm looking down here at the console. Let me zoom in a bit. Um, exclamation points right here um, are actually tagged with the tag of a dot, meaning punctuation. So a period, there is the, um, the part of speech tag for punctuation. So here's an example of a mistake. Are you completely new to programming? This NNP is a proper noun. That's a verb. I know that NNP is a proper noun. I'll jump over here and show you. Proper noun singular is NNP. That's wrong. There's a mistake on the tagger. Um, one second. Sorry, my daughter needed my attention real quick. Um, yeah, so there's an error, right? That should be a verb. Uh, personal pronoun, that looks good. Completely, that looks like an adverb. RB is adverb, if I'm not mistaken. I'll jump over and double check. Yep, RB is adverb. Uh, new is adjective, that's correct. Two, they just tag, they have a special tag for two is two, T-O, happens so much. Anyway, just skim through and take a quick look, going back and forth between the tag set and see what, what errors you find. Um, okay. <laughs> Modify your previous program to use the universal tag set. Next, calculate uh, how many of each uh, tag the paragraph has. Interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, go ahead and use the universal tag set and calculate how many tags, uh, how many of each tag there are. All right. So you have to apply getting a frequency, frequency counts with dictionaries after you've done the, the tagging with the universal tag set argument, right? Put all that together into a nice pipeline to get the number of nouns, number of verbs, number of pronouns, etc. Okay. Give that a try for a few minutes. Okay, let me show you that, how I would approach that. I'm using collections here, fine, fine, no problem. Grab all this and put it here. Okay, so here I have my same text, right? And here I'm importing NLTK and collections. I'm gonna use the collection or the counter function from that thing to do my um, frequency counting. Again, there are six different ways you can count up frequencies in a big list. Um, this is one of them. So here I do tokenize, same thing as before, right? Very simple, you just take the string and tokenize it into words. And you get the list back of words, throw that into the POS tag. We're gonna use the tag that equals universal there. Um, good. And then here I'm gonna use a list comprehension to get only the tags, which are the second element in each tuple, right? So I'm saying I for I in tag, but not every, not both sides of the I, I just simply want the second thing. I want the the JJ or the dot or the NNP, et cetera. I'm looking down here at the bottom of my screen for a second. Um, I just want the second thing there. So rather than everything I say, okay, index into the current tuple and just give me the second thing. So I should end up with a bunch of tags. like. Let me print that out for you so you can see it as we're going through here. I'll just comment out the rest for a second and I'll run the script so we can show you that that's what tags will have. Okay, so we just have a list with just the tags. We don't even have the tokens anymore. Okay, so that's what this line eight does. And then at that point, just throw this into the counter function and collections and let it count up and then we'll just look at the frequencies after that point. Let's run it. Okay, so apparently we have 14 verbs, 10 adverbs, eight punctuation marks of some sort, not only periods, but that's, so there's a POS tag that is a period <clears throat> that represents punctuation. ADP, I can't remember what ADP is. Let's look at what ADP is in the tag set. ADP is not even listed here. Okay, so here's a case where this little, this is an abbreviated list here. Um, this doesn't have ADP. So a couple of ways to do it. Let me go up to uh, view tool windows and open up a Python console, right? View tool windows, Python console. And uh, I still have it up right here, actually. Let me just go ahead and scroll up to ADP and see if it's listed up here. Um, hmm. 
Um, I'm not seeing what that is. And this this uh, display here. Another way is to Google this. Um, this again, this string pen tree bank tag set. And there's a bigger. Just look at some other ones, perhaps. There's a bigger list. Let me just look at this from Sketch Engine, which is a um, website for Corpora ADP. I'm still not seeing it. Interesting. Let me just search this web page for ADP. It's not on this web page. Well, anyway, I've struck out and trying to find um, exactly what that tag is. I'll have to look into that later. But um, so. Okay, let me just run that again. Okay, so anyway, noun seven, adjective six, etc. So that's how you could do that. Count up the number of tags using the universal tag set. If you want to stop the video and make that work on your computer, that would be a good idea at this point. Okay. Let's do one last thing here. It says modify your program to get a ta uh, to tag a text of your choice. Again, perhaps a novel from Gutenberg. It's always uh, it's kind of a low hanging fruit here. Very easy to get and has a lot of words in the text file ready to go. Or in a speech from a political leader or whatever. Um, find all comparative adjectives in the document. And if there aren't too many, report the precision of the tagger with comparative adjectives. Well, that's that last part. If you're looking at a novel, that's going to be way too many. Try this first part, just um, grab a big text, text file, maybe a novel, maybe some other text file, and just try and find all comparative adjectives in the document so that it prints out to you all the comparative adjectives. Now, comparative adjectives are words that are, that end in er, like bigger is a comparative adjective because you're comparing it to something else. If he is bigger than the other guy, whatever. Um, Right, and so if we look at the tag set, let me jump back to a place where I can show you the tag set. Let me just do it again, pen, tree bank tag set. I'll click on this first kind of abbreviated display. Uh, it's JJR are comparative adjectives. So the tag JJR are comparative adjectives there. Okay, so try that for a few minutes. Let me get back to the directions. Um, find all comparative adjectives in the document. Um, and have them print out to the console. Okay, let's give that a try. Let's see, what do I have here? Oh, I'm doing, I'm going out to getting, uh, going to get a speech by Barack Obama um, at the 65th birthday party for John Lewis. There, that's a little more involved, but Let's do it. This is doing stuff I haven't I haven't shown you yet at all how to do, but just for the sake of, of using the part of speech tagger, um, let's just show you this. And I do it again with uh, with a uh, TXT file on my hard drive. This is all new stuff that I haven't shown you. Uh, so we'll just kind of focus on once we have the text ready to go, which we do at this point down here, Obama. Then we throw that into tokenize there, and then we POS tag that, right? So I save it back to itself, Obama. Um, and then here I say, okay, I'm gonna loop over each tuple, right? I have a token and a POS tag within a tuple, and I have a bunch of those within a large list. I'm gonna loop over that list. And I'm gonna say, I want you to search for uh, JJR. Uh, so in regex, let me zoom in here a second. In regex language, right, the caret means, what does the caret mean? It means beginning of a string. And the dollar sign in regex language means the end of a string. So I'm saying find the, the beginning of a string and then find JJR and then find the end. So basically I just want the entire string to be JJR, nothing else. And by saying I1 here, Right, I'm saying as, when you're looking at a two item tuple, I want you to look at the second thing that's an index of one. If that evaluates true, that is if you find JJR as the tag, right, then print out the token. So I'm saying I zero here because I wanna print out the first thing which is the token, like the word. 
whereas I1 is looking at the POS tag, the parse piece tag. Okay, let's see if this works. This may blow up in my face here. I haven't run this. Okay, it worked. All right. So apparently in this speech, which I can show you just so you can see what I'm talking about with this. Let me just see if I can show you this little speech just so you know what I'm pulling from. I'm just pulling this text out of this website and put it into Python, within Python. Anyway, this was given on uh, in 2000, five before President Barack Obama was president. Anyway, he gives a speech um, at John Lewis's 65th birthday, a big old speech here. And so, sorry, doing that, that web scraping, it's called web scraping, is out of the scope of what I'm trying to show you here. But once I have the text, and then I go through and do a POS tagging, right, right here, tokenized in POS tag. And then I just loop over the two item tuples that have a token and a POS tag. I said, look at the, the POS tag right here and tell me if you see JJR. If so, then I want to see the token. And so we have five. We have louder, more, better, more, and closer. So, okay. And then five comparative adjectives were found. All of them are in actuality comparative adjectives and therefore the precision is 100% or 1.0 as a ratio. Okay. Yeah, so I only had five and, and I can see those are all correct. Uh, okay. Right, because you can use more, like he's more um, reliable than the other guy. Right, and so that's a comparative adjective, even though it doesn't have, there are two, two forms of comparative adjectives, right? You can say er, like smarter, or you can say more, like more intelligent. We, we don't say intelligent er. She's intelligent er than him. No, we say more intelligent with that adjective. But with smart, we use the er form. She's smarter than him. Um, if you were to say she's more smart than him, it sounds like something other than smart. <laughs> anyway, there are two different ways to, to do comparative adjectives in English, and, and using more plus adjectives is, is one of the ways, or just putting er on the end. Okay, so if you want to stop the video, um, anyway, once you get a bunch of words into Python, um, then you tokenize them, POS tag them, and then this little bit of, of code from 22 to 24 simply uh, looks at the tag and looks for those, looks for this regex, and if it finds it, then it prints out the token. All right, I1 here, but I0 here. <laughs> All right, so if you like to pause the video, make it work on your end, do so now. You can look at the solution file as well. So that is a quick rundown on how you can do part of speech tagging with the NLTK library. So at this point, you should be able to tag words, tag words for part of speech in a text with the NLTK library. And that does it. Thank you so much. See you next time.